Hello, I'm Freeman Rabowski, president of UMBC, and I'm delighted to welcome Jim Ferry to Retrieve a Nation. Coach Ferry will do a lot to build on the momentum that we have right now with men's basketball. I want to start by thanking Brian Berrio and Greg Simmons and Candace Lassen reed my colleagues who work to manage this process. Uh, Brian Berrio, the athletic director, has been an amazing leader during this period. It was an efficient and thorough process, and we had great interest from a lot of places around the country, saying a lot about the American East Conference and its reputation and the reputation of UMBC, both in athletics and academically. I had a chance to spend time with Jim on Sunday. We talked in my office, and I had a chance to take him to the roof. I didn't ask him for any money, but we did talk a lot about vision and about what he plans to do. What came through is that he knows a lot about UMBC. He knows about our academic excellence. He has a passion for being a coach as an educator and a human being. He's very proud of his players. And when he talks, he talks with authenticity, not only about basketball and his players, but about his family and his own background. He is very impressive. And so we all look forward to working with Coach Ferry and to cheering our basketball team in the event center. Until that time, just know, Jim, we welcome you and your family, and we say congratulations to you. We believe in you, and you will believe in us. And finally, go dogs. Thank you, Freeman, for your tremendous support of Retriever Athletics. I'm Steve Levy, Director of Athletic Communications here at UMBC. It's my pleasure to welcome you today to this very special event. 2020-21 has been a remarkable year for athletics on Hilltop Circle. Why? Because we competed. All 17 varsity programs had an opportunity to compete for a championship. Believe me, nine months ago, that was not a very likely scenario. Credit goes to our university administration, led by Dr. Rabowski and Vice President Greg Simmons. Our athletic administration, led by Brian Barrio. The entire support staff, with a special shout out to our sports medicine and sports performance staff, the entire coaching staff, and our student athletes themselves who have demonstrated maturity and leadership beyond their years. There have been great achievements during this year. Three of our teams competing this spring have earned national rankings. Our volleyball team, which added to the UMBC legend of the upset school, won its first ever America East Championship and just competed versus Pepperdine in the NCAA championships. As a segue to men's basketball, which is why we're here today, the head coach of that volleyball team, Christina Robertson, who was just named the East Coast Region Coach of the Year, was a standout volleyball player at LIU Brooklyn when Jim Ferry was patrolling the sidelines as head coach of the Blackbirds. In another irony, Coach Ferry's first year at LIU was the Retriever's final season in the Northeast Conference. He just reminded me that uh, LIU swept a pair of games from UMBC that season. However, the Retrievers earned a little revenge against the Jim Ferry coach team in the winter of 2016, when some guys named Lyles, Sherburn, Marr, and Grant led UMBC to an 81-72 win at Duquesne. Those guys are on your side now, Coach. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to introduce UMBC Director of Athletics, Brian Barrio, who has shepherded our department through this challenging year. Steve, thanks so much for, for your kind words. It has been an incredible year for UMBC Athletics. Um, and I want to echo one thing you said about the volleyball team. You know, we just walked out of watching the volleyball team in the NCAA championships slugging it out with the Pepperdine Waves. And it's it just an impressive thing. And as Steve said, something we didn't see coming nine months ago. So we're, we're thrilled for more reasons than just men's basketball today. Um, I want to start off with a few thank yous. Uh, first of all, our student athletes. You know, our, these periods of transition are such a challenge for young people. And, and we've stayed in touch with them. We've talked to them every day. But that doesn't make the discomfort go away. So we're, we're thrilled that we were able to move quickly, comprehensively, and get to the point where we are today. So I thank them for their, for their patience. Uh, Freeman Rabowski, uh, anytime I get in front of a microphone, I'm going to mention Freeman Rabowski and thank him for the support that he gives to this program day in and day out. As he's been running this amazing university, he also took time out of his schedule this week to be a, to be a really active part of our, of our search. 
um, on very short notice. So I appreciate that, and I want to thank him. Along the same lines, I want to thank Candace Dodson-Reed and Greg Simmons, our Chief of Staff and, and VP for Advancement, respectively, um, who were part of the search committee, who spent, who essentially cleared the decks on their, on their very busy schedules um, to be a part of this search and, and were just invaluable um, in getting us to the point where we are today. So thank you to both of them. Candace, I still need your shoe size because we're going to take care of you with some gear. Um, I want to thank Katie Young Stout from Turnkey ZRG Search, um, who is, <laughs> who I learned this week is the absolute best in the business, um, organized an incredible number of interviews, an incredible number of, of references, um, all kinds of work um, to help us get this done quickly on behalf of our student athletes. So thank you, Katie. I want to thank the Office of the General Counsel here at, at uh, UMBC and also our Human Resources Department. Again, we worked very quickly. That was a priority. Um, but we could not have done it and done it the right way without them. So I want to thank both of those offices. Dr. Jessica Hammond-Graff, our Deputy Athletic Director. Um, for the past seven days, essentially, I've been working 24 hours on this men's basketball search and have been largely unavailable. And she's run the department the way she could um, all the time. She's wonderful. And I want to thank her for all the extra work that she put in this week. And then finally, Steve Levy, Seth Nagel, Liz Frediani, and Dave Castellanos from our staff um, who, who scrambled to put this event together today on short notice during COVID times. Not an easy task. And I think they did a wonderful job. So thank you to them. You know, I mentioned that it's COVID, that we're, we're dealing with this during COVID. And um, it's, it's certainly not our, pro not our preference. Uh, we wish that our community could be here. We wish a lot of people could be here today, including our student athletes who we just, who we just left in the gym. Um, but some of, the, some of the fans and supporters that I want to mention that I know, if this were a normal time, would be sitting here around us. Larry and Evangeline Wiggins, Mimi and Bob Dietrich, Todd Carton, Rick Moreland, Bobby Mills, Don Pelto and Bill Wade, among many, many others who support this program. I want, I want you to know, I know you'd be here with us and I wish you could be. You know, as I said before um, in my statement earlier this week, we weren't looking forward to a coaching change, but we were very much prepared for it. And a lot of the work that went into preparing for this search was done not in the last week, but in the last year, in terms of watching video, um, doing, do, you know, calling around, finding out what the marketplace looks like. And I want everybody to know, I mean, a very, very wise person told me once that uh, if you fail to prepare, you're prepared to fail. And we were prepared for this and we were ready. And that's why we were able to pull it off, um, you know, in, in, in relatively short order. You know, in all coaching searches, we're looking for people who can do three things. One, recruit, because that's the lifeblood of a program. You have to be able to recruit talented student athletes. You have to be able to recruit student athletes that are a great fit for your particular university. Two, you have to be able to develop student athletes, not just as players, but as people. So on and off the court, you have to be able to develop student athletes. And finally, you need to be able to engage the larger community, our students, our alums, folks on campus. Uh, we need somebody who can reach out outside of the silo and, and bring our whole community into the program. And those are all critically important in any coaching search. At UMBC specifically, it was a priority to find somebody who had genuine care for our student athletes, somebody who's going to develop great lasting relationships. We want coaches, and I tell our coaches this all the time, uh, who are going to be invited to weddings uh, several years after students graduate from college. We want that type of relationship to develop. Um, we want to have student, we want to have coaches, in this case, in, uh, we were able to, you know, because of where this program has come from over the last five years, you know, this is not the program it was in 2016. We have a new building. We have, you know, we have some name recognition thanks to the win over Virginia that we didn't have in the past. This program has been elevated and the coaching search reflected that. It was because of that, it was really important that we had somebody who had head coaching experience and we had a lot of, uh, a lot of qualified head coaches interested in this position. And finally, it's, it's important that we have somebody who's great with X's and O's. You know, you have to know the game of basketball in this league. There's great coaches across the America, uh, across the America East. Uh, and in order for us to compete to our highest uh, ability, we need a coach who can do that. And, you know, as I called around, um, you know, I, I've had, had the opportunity over the last 25 years to develop incredible relationships in college basketball from Providence, Rhode Island and Malibu, California. Um, and it was amazing that all the people I talked to at all levels of basketball unanimously had great things to say about the man sitting next to me. Um, you know, we talked to 15 great candidates in the first two days alone uh, after Ryan's announcement, believe it or not. 
Uh, we had already conducted 15 interviews. But as we narrowed that field through these conversations, Jim Ferry emerged as someone who met all of these needs I've talked about. Someone we felt would be a tremendous fit with our community here at UMBC, who would build genuine, caring relationships with our student athletes, and someone who would represent this school with class and put us in a position to continue to compete for champions, championships. Sorry. If you've seen Jim's teams play, which I have, you know this is a guy who built the best team in the Northeast Conference this century, and who this past year at Penn State did an incredible job under challenging circumstances. Among, among other things, he put up 81 points on Wisconsin, which not, nobody else did this year. Um, and by the way, he got two wins against the team down the road in College Park, which doesn't hurt with our fans. I told him that we've got three digits on our scoreboard, and we'd like to start using the third one more. Um, and I think that's something he wants to do. So I am truly, truly excited to welcome Jim and Kelly Ferry and their family, because I understand that when you get the ferries, you get the whole family, uh, to the UMBC community. Introdu introdu introduce all of you to the 10th head coach in UMBC men's basketball history, Jim Ferry. First of all, it was really, really flattering, and uh, thank you, thank you. Um, I am sincerely grateful and, and excited uh, for this unbelievable opportunity. Um, and there's so many people to thank. Uh, you know, I'd like to start by, by thanking Dr. Rabowski, um, VP Greg Simmons, um, Kansas Dot and Reed. Again, everybody that was involved in the process, and, and Athletic Director Brian Barrio. I mean. Uh, the thing that was so evident to me was the love for this place and how special this place is. Um, it, it just came glaring through. And again, sometimes that's hard during the process. We're now, we're on Zooms. We really don't get to see people, but it's just how connected everybody was, how sincere everybody was, uh, and how special a place this is. Um, I'd also like to thank my, my wife and my kids and my family uh, for all the support. A lot of people don't realize how tough it is on families to be a coach's uh, wife and a coach's family. Um, a lot of times I become Uncle Jimmy during the season, but uh, I'm getting better at it. Um, but again, I, I want to go back. Like UMBC, it's a special, special place. Uh, I've heard people talk about it. I've done my research on it. And then it's just very, very evident from the first day that I met Brian and then I met Greg and then I read Freeman and Candace. And I was like, wow, I, I get it now. You know, th this place, it just starts with the people. Uh, and the people that know me, I am a people person. And, and this is where I want to be. I want to be at a place that it's, it's one of the best universities in the country. And just the feel that oozes out from everybody around on this campus is the same. And when you have that, great things are going to happen. And great things have happened here. And we're going to continue to make great things happen here. Um, you know, like I said, you know, they've done great success here. There's been great things going on here. Um, you know, you got to talk about what Ryan Odom and his staff has done by bringing in these kids uh, and building this program and doing it the right way. Uh, and I just can't say how honored I am and happy I am and excited I am to just help this program take the next step because at a place like UMBC where you can tell the commitment is all around that we can compete for championships every year and that's what we're here to do. Um, you know, myself and my staff you know, we're going to continue to do things the right way, okay? We talk about the time, this is a program that's built on class. We are going to do it with class. We are going to do it with dignity. We are going to do it with integrity. That stuff is really, really important to me. We are going to continue to recruit great student athletes and great families because that's what UMBC is made up of, and that's really where you have great success. You know, we are going to be a group of guys that are completely unselfish, disciplined, tough and that's the mindset we are going to bring to this program okay everything you see about this program and i'm going to talk basketball stuff now we're going to be aggressive we are going to be aggressor in everything we do okay the kids the guys they're going to love playing this style of basketball it's going to be up tempo it's going to be fast we're going to play with great pace the student athletes are going to love it the fans are going to love it i think everybody involved is going to love it we're going to defend with toughness and aggressiveness you know, this league is a great league, great players, great coaches. You have to defend with great toughness to give yourself a chance to win in this basketball league. 
I think the guys are going to love it. I really do. I think our fans are going to love it. I know I'm going to love it. I can't tell you how excited I am to be here. And, and to be honest with you, I love all this stuff. I just want to get to the court. I, I really do. I want to get to work with these guys. I spent a little bit of time with them. Uh, but again, I'm really truly excited to be here. I'm truly proud to represent UMBC and be a part of this basketball family. And like I said, man, I just want to get to work with these guys. So let's go dogs. Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach Ferry. For any uh, media members that are watching the stream and want to participate in the press session with Coach Ferry and Brian Barrio, just give us a few minutes to make a few set changes here. Uh, Dave Castellanos will be with you as close to 3 o'clock as possible. Retriever Nation, continue to watch this space. I promise you this will not, not be the last exciting news involving basketball this spring. A special thanks to the UMBC New Media Studio for producing the stream and wishing everyone a very pleasant afternoon.